Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to give you uh, part two of our landscape lesson for this these two weeks. Um, I did go in, if you'll remember, this was um, this was just kind of a black, gray, and white of this image. And I uh, did this with it. I didn't film it because who knew what kind of sausage making would go into it. So I know that there's no way I can not have the light reflect on this. I'll take a picture of it uh, and post it for you. But uh, it has a great deal of texture. I did a lot of palette knife on top of that black, gray, and white that I did. I kind of kept the integrity of this. I could have gone way more abstract, but I just wanted to kind of create the feeling. And I'm going to talk all these eight weeks, I'm going to talk a whole lot about feeling because I have found for myself that that has made a difference in my work and I can see it in your work when you do it and with feeling. Uh, it's better than trying to do everything exact. So I really want you to find a freedom to look at your work and say, this is me, this is what I do. And another thing that I have found also is that with each piece that you do, you may not like each piece. These are all just studies that we're doing and we're not wed to the outcome. But with each piece that you do, and if you look back at a lot of the work you've done over the years, each piece that you do, you can find little clues that you will like to capture and take to your next paintings. That's what makes you grow as a, a painter. So, yes, I like this this uh, texture that I've created. I think that some values are good in here. I've got distance because I didn't over-texturize this back part of my view. The texture is all here, which in reality, the texture was here. So, today, I am going to develop this piece for you. And see what we can do with this. I guess I can't help myself. I uh, will try to keep it kind of real looking without going into too much detail. But I just want to... Uh, it'll probably border on getting a little abstract over the course of my working on it. But I wanted to use this reference and ones like that I, I have sent you because you can see that um, there's just a simplicity of shapes. And I think that all of us can benefit from not getting in the weeds uh, literally and figuratively. I don't want you to draw the blades of grass and things like that. I don't even want you to do the texture on that building unless you want to make it front and center. The biggest part of your painting. Um, just look at the shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, remember when I spoke earlier of happy hour? You don't need any more than that to develop your, your painting. You can get a little bit of detail in as you go uh, toward the end of your piece, but try to keep it fresh without making too many strokes. So I have taken again some liberties before I started filming this just to go in and scribble. What's the problem with that? There's no problem. I can scribble all over it and through the painting I do, some of this mark making may show up, but also uh, I can cover it all because this is acrylics. Uh, when we do some of these pieces, you know that you can test your own paints and see which ones are more transparent and which ones are more opaque and think about where you're going to use these. Um, so 
what can happen is as I develop this piece, there may be some of these pencil lines that get to show up and that just gives it a little more texture. Uh, I think my values are pretty good, but I'm gonna start painting. I wanted to show you, this is turquoise deep. I, uh, it's two colors plus black and white. And this is yellow ochre. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit by infusing a little bit of quinacridone gold into that, but that ends up being on my yellow side of the palette. And these turquoises are my blue, plus black and white. Um, these would be the fully saturated colors, meaning what color they are out of the tube is the saturated color. But each one of these mixed with white and or black take it to some semi-neutral stages and uh, we really need some of those instead of having it all look like strong colors out of a crayon box.
Now, um, as we say all along, this is just a study. Um, and I did stay true to my limited palette. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things that I, I didn't do it realistically because, uh, first of all, this image has way too much of this dark wedge. So I made that smaller and I, I left the dark underneath and did some dry brush over it to make it look a little more interesting and look like grasses somewhat. I raised the line of mountains because, um, well, because I wanted more balance between this and this. This was a little skinny in the photo, which is fine. And I could have done that, but then the whole painting would have been just about this area. So really, I in limiting my palette, I used uh, the uh, turquoise and a little bit of yellow ochre and Nicolazzo gold. Um, so and and black and white, and so I've got nice values. Um, my Barn is a little wonky, but that's why we like to paint barns, because they are wonky. And I've got some dark light, dark light, and uh, my detail is mostly around the little building. So that's okay, but this is a quick study, and we can do these and, and just twiddle with them uh, to make them be either... Uh, more representational or a little more abstract. Here is this one in the square. Or as a uh, landscape orientation. But it's a sweet little thing. I'm not ashamed of it, but I'm not, you know, it's not going to be one that I'm going to market or, or put on the internet. But anyway, I I did... I did work on strokes, I did work on values, and I did work on using all my colors throughout the painting. I hope that's something that you feel that you're accomplishing. Um, so looking at both of these, they are the same palette. One is more abstract and one is more texturized, and this has an element of peace to it. In this composition, the actual horizontal lines create an illusion of peace or or um, tranquility, um, which kind of we need right now. This has a little more energy and a lot more motion going on in it, and I like this too. And this has probably more contrast, but it is the same palette for each. And as I've said all along, you can... Uh, crop them any which way you want. I don't like that just showing up in the corner, so I'll probably crop it more like that. And this is obviously the little shed is the center of interest, but I, if I were to crop it, I don't want to put it right smack in the middle, so I'm going to kind of pull it off to the side. And I don't want that horizon to go right through the middle either. So I've got that going for it. So that's an okay, that's an okay little study. You could do more of them and get more complex. But I think I'm going to call this a day with these. That. And that. That. 